Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and check this tweet out. I keep this $1 million, $1 million mark, German marks note as a, or $1 million mark, not $1 million mark. Um, as a reminder why I own Bitcoin, insert XRP where he's got Bitcoin. 1 million German marks could not buy a loaf of bread by September of 1923. Germans saw their life savings wiped out with the US dollar collapse. I don't know. I hold XRP, just in case. <laughs> I mean, that's true. Look at this. The country has been poisoned from within via the Federal Reserve. The general public is soon to awaken to, to this reality that will be forced upon them. We are rapidly approaching a period in history that Austrian economist Ludwig von, Ludwig von Mises uh, called the crack-up boom in the Fed. There's no means of avoiding the final collapse of a boom bought uh, brought about by credit expansion. The alternative is only whether the crisis should come sooner as the result of voluntary abandonment of further credit expansion or later as a final and total catastrophe at, of the currency system involved. Reminder that Glint, one of my sponsors, this is I buy gold at Glint, I buy physical gold because gold is the antidote to the Federal Reserve. And on Monday, this coming Monday, uh, they are going to launch their new app. They're upgrading their, their current app. So you can go check that out. A uh, link to that's in the top of the description. This person said, retweet if you think XRP price has been suppressed. I retweeted and I said, in every way you can imagine. We've talked about that a lot. Now, there's something that apparently the people looking at charts are seeing right now. I don't know anything about charts, but but I saw this article, what Ripple holders can expect next week as XRP price coils up for explosive move to this level. level. And then I saw two tweets from Egrag Crypto. XRT, XRP uh, double triangles, and he's got as high as $4.58 on that. He says, still respecting the smaller triangle. XRP has to break out to the upside and retest it for a bullish continuation. XRP Army, the breakout is coming. Be patient. And then he had this one, XRP Diamond Bottom update. $10 Diamond Bottom. It's the, he says the Diamond pa Bottom pattern is still intact. So everything I see there, it's, I mean, there isn't, if there's any digital asset on the planet that's coiled up, that's been suppressed, that is ready to blast off, there is nothing besides XRP in that category to me. Can't be. All right, five bank failures in roughly a week. Listen to this. This banking crisis has swept in five bank failures. First, there was Silvergate, but everyone dismissed that because it was some weird crypto bank. Then it was SVB, but everyone sort of dismissed it because they said it was based on panicky VCs rather than a systemic problem in the banking system. Then it was Signature Bank, which got seized on Sunday, which I think utterly refuted the idea that this was just a Silicon Valley problem. Then you had First Republic, which would have been the next domino to fall if it wasn't backstopped. And then five, you had Credit Suisse. Again, avoid an outright failure because it got backstopped by the Swiss government. So we now have five banks in roughly a week. And these are not small banks. Credit Suisse is a globally systemically important bank. And the other ones are top 20, top 30 type banks. We're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars in deposits. So clearly there's a larger phenomenon going on here. And frankly, it's being caused not by like anything VCs did, because VCs are just depositors. We're just one class of depositors. And depositors are not to blame for what's going on here. What's going on is these banks have huge unrealized losses on their balance sheet. And the losses have come from the sun's spike in interest rates. Yep, the Federal Reserve System. And then there's this, just in 186 banks found to have si similar vulnerabilities as Silicon Valley Bank, Wall Street Journal reports. Um, Caitlin Long, who is very smart, she's, she's been, no, she's a Bitcoin maxi, but she's also very smart. <laughs> they don't go hand in hand, in my opinion. The anti-tech, anti-crypto faction in Washington, D.C. that cheered as they arguably caused bank run, runs so they could rein in the, the few fintech forward banks that bucked them 
triggered what could become biggest credit credit uh, contraction in history, massive Fed balance sheet expansion, probably incoming. And this guy says, if banks were suddenly forced to liquidate their bond and loan portfolios, the losses would erase between 77% and 91% of their com combined capital cushion. It follows that large numbers of banks are terrif terrifyingly fragile. Ooh, ooh. Now, then... Um, she was uh, Caitlin Long was on. Um, she was on a uh, uh, did a, a video like a panel video in the last uh, couple days. Watch this, and I and I said here I don't blame. Look, these people, the go the current government is breaking the law left and right. They don't care. Okay, I don't blame them because we know exactly who and what they are. I blame the people like Tom Emmer who told us that a new day is coming and now all he does is writes letters and tweets and talks and does nothing. Meanwhile, the bad guys who are breaking the law are doing, like the Gary Genslers of the world, action, action, action. They're actually doing things while everybody else is talking and saying a new day is coming, new day is coming. Well, bull crap. Here's, what's, here's what the bad guys are doing. Um, but ultimately, then it became clear. And in fact, actually, we had, thankfully, there's a sieb in Washington. We had insiders come forward and confirm to us the White House was involved. And it was pretty obvious that day of the, uh, of the custodial re and, uh, denial because the White House and the Fed coordinated to release their press releases at exactly the same time. Now, here's the smoking gun. Everybody at the time was speculating, was there going to be another Operation Choke Point 2.0, as you, as you said, Nick. What we have is evidence in email because a reporter revealed to us what the reporter was told. And the reporter told us that they were told that within the last 48 hours that the all the Fed and OCC bank charter applicants had been asked to withdraw their applications or they would be voted down. Okay, so I knew <laughs> from the early stage that Operation Choke Point 2.0 was absolutely underway and absolutely coordinated. Again, the interesting question is, wait a minute, there are due process protections for applicants for bank charters. They are supposed to be re uh, reviewed by the agencies on their individual merits. And then all of a sudden, press leaks are confirming that the Fed and the OCC applicants were asked to withdraw at the same time? Come on. So the law breaking is being allowed. And here's Tom Emmer doing more talk and speeches and tweets and letters. Submitted online anonymously. And, and then that's going to be the one question quota that I was given. Um, this is, uh, uh, I find, I think I like this one. Here we go. Um, the Fed is clearly, I'm just reading this, okay. <laughs> the Fed has clearly indicated that a decision to issue a CBDC would be a decision for Congress and that it has no intention of issuing a CBDC without authorization from Congress. Therefore, why do we need a bill to tell the Fed to do something, to, to tell, I'm sorry, to tell the Fed to not do something it was never planning on doing? It was never planning on doing. Whoever sent that in, I, I really appreciate it, and I understand their logic. But they are assuming that there are good actors in this space and that what they are hearing from these unelected bureaucrats who are saying there's nothing to see here. It's all good. We need to have uh, permission. It's interesting. The Federal Reserve issued uh, some uh, documents recently that my staff was provided. I uh, just showed up at one of their uh, events, and they have a... Uh, a, a slide, I would say, or in this deck, where it lists what the Federal Reserve is responsible for. It's responsible for uh, the money supply. It's responsible for the two-tier uh, rails of the banking system, uh, the overnight window, those types of things that we're used to, right? You know what the bullet point was at the bottom? Central bank digital currency. They're putting it out in their own materials today, and they have no authority. They have not been directed by Congress to do a thing. Let's understand that what they say is not necessarily what they're doing. You are dealing with central bankers around the world, which I am not opposed to the central banking system.
But the idea, and I, I think these people literally looked at this uh, more than a decade ago and said, oh, look at those kids that are playing with this Satoshi white paper. And isn't that fun? It's kind of like a, it's kind of like gaming, right? Virtual gaming. It's virtual money. It's never going to go anywhere. And oops, then it started gaining some traction because people don't trust. Or they created it and wanted everybody to think that they, <laughs> that they um, are opposed to it. But anyway, my point is, is that more talk at the podium, but while the Fed is, is putting actions in motion and while Gary, while Gary Gensler is just going after everybody and their brother, this guy's just talking at the podium, tweeting, sending letters. Then there's this. What if ETH is a Trojan horse of crypto? If the New York State Attorney General determines the, that ETH is a security, who will fight the New York State Attorney General in court? So far, none of the ETH usual suspects has come out to denounce the allegation. They already made their money and have opened the door for the corrupt SEC to enter. So, so I'm kind of conflicted here because you, 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 I've always thought that they, the, that the Ethereum gang knew that they had a window of time where they could just make money hand over fist. Maybe they know that that, maybe they never intended for Ethereum to be anything. Maybe that was the plan is stick billions in our pockets. What, because Hinman gave us this opportunity to have this fake regulatory clarity for a couple of years until, until the SEC was ready to shut all of crypto down. Who knows? But I do know this. Vitalik Buterin is, un, is liquidating a lot of his altcoin holdings. And I'm wondering if he's getting liquid knowing that he might have a have some monetary damages he might be responsible for uh, soon to come. Who knows? I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that we have one shady government.